Hello everyone, this is Daryl Guberman, CEO of Guberman PMC LLC, a quality consulting firm here in Connecticut. We've been in business going on 12 years. This video today is about Daryl Guberman, CEO, explains to a Department of Defense contractor why GPMC LLC is not listed on the OASIS membership list. Unlike my competitors, unlike my competitors, ladies and gentlemen, business owners, GPMC has refused for the last 12 years going on to get involved with a country like communist China that welds the door shut on their citizens' apartments during the COVID lockdown. And I will explain in this video why we didn't join. We were asked to join in 2016, the either ANAP or the IAF or both, but we as a proud American could not in all good conscience we appreciate the invitation, but we could not do it. Along this time, 2012 all the way up to uh, 2019, we were uh, badgered and belittled, called a certificate mill and all the rest of this mess. We're going to prove to you who is the real certificate mill. It is not GPMC along with our accreditation body, but it is our competition. And let's continue. In 2013, I gave a speech at the American Society for Quality. At that time, the ASQ, the American Society for Quality, and the American National Standards Institute, ANSI, owned the American National Crediting Board, ANAB, 50 and 50. So a Dave Levy, a Region 3 deputy director from the ASQ, came there because he was told to come there. Listen to me, try to discredit me, but he couldn't do it. Dave said in the conversation of that night, this is what Dave said. He approved us. I'll hold it here for a moment. I'm not going to read it. You can stop the video. But this is a lot of information I'm going through, especially to educate those business owners who may have an ANSI ANAB certificate on the wall, or they're debating about whether to get certified. And that goes along with government contractors at, as well. So that was 2013. In 2000 and, um, 2016, Randy Dory, the, uh, at the time, uh, in 2014, he was the vice president of ANAP, chairman of the IAF, and also the principal on the IAF, International Accreditation Forum, Incorporated in Delaware, uh, 990 tax firm. He invited us to join, and join either ANAP or IAF or both. I apologize for the glare. And this was 2016. He further went on in this document, and I'm going to read this to you in this letter. He said, but we recognize and accept that there are conformity assessment bodies and accreditation bodies, such as your registrar and your accreditation body, that are not part of the IAF, International Accreditation Forum, and the International Laboratory Accreditation Cooperation Structure. By the way, ANSI and ANAB are underwriters for those two organizations. If you don't know what a Underwriter is they take full legal responsibility for any uh, you know any so sort of failures with inside uh, that uh, the products. While my colleagues and I at ANAP can attest to the confidence and the integrity and competence of registers accredited by IF member accreditation bodies, we cannot attest this for your body. Now I'm going to just say this: you have Johnson and Johnson and Pfizer sitting on ANSI's board. You'll see that right over by the. FDA, right over by the USDA, the CDC, and NIH. They both skipped quality processes and standards. One, Johnson Johnson, 60 million vials got returned. Another one, Pfizer, 15 million got returned for quality, skipping quality standards and procedures. You have Boeing, okay, Boeing that sits on ANSI's board. You have also Boeing that sits on ANAB's board and that can grant, suspend, and withdraw certification. We can see how good that worked with the uh, 737 MAX, the Boeing 777-787 failure. Boeing sits right over by the FAA. That seceded inspection in 2009 means this, if you don't know what seceded means. It means that they could design, develop, build, fly, and probably sign off flight worthiness for the 737 MAX. It probably also 
happened for the 777 and 787. But in 2002, Boeing came out with a procurement uh, procedure that stated if you hold an AS9100 certificate, that's like an ISO standard for aerospace for those of you who don't know, then you can send your products into us and we really don't need to look at your quality because that piece of paper tells it all. Does it really? For 20 years, you've had issues now. You have Boeing quality issues because more than likely so, when they gave up doing a lot of the in-house inspection at these different facilities, especially the flight worthiness um, you know, suppliers. And by the way, Boeing was caught fudging documentation on the aircraft along with their counterpart, Kobe Steel, fudging documentation on metals going into those aircrafts. I wonder if they took those metals out. Do you think so? Not me. <laughs> it's probably built into the product. They probably figure that where it is located, it's a fa maybe failure, might not failure, could be possibly, maybe. You have Lockheed Martin. There you go, Lockheed Martin. I just did a video on the 800 aircraft, seven uh, F-35s that were delivered, okay, to the government. They're still producing rejects after 800 aircraft, Lockheed Martin, they sit on ANSI's board. They also sit on the IF, the International Accreditation Forum. In 2009, okay, in 2009, Lockheed Martin got hacked by China, no less. In 2012, the division of United Technologies gets hacked by China, taking the Blackhawk, the uh, Sikorsky's. In 2015, in the Connecticut Mirror, there is an article that stated, with China's okay, Lockheed Martin closes in on the purchase of Sikorsky aircraft. With China's okay. Does that sit well with you, my, uh, uh, my dear veterans? Does that sit well with you? And in that article, you have Rosa DeLauro, Jim Himes, Chris Murphy, and Richard Blumenthal all complimenting Lockheed Martin for working with communist China. Isn't that a tender moment in a terrorist community? Okay, and let me just, <laughs> I should say cybersecurity community. And then we go further to, to give substance to that. It's exact words in that article was, Connecticut lawmakers praise Lockheed Martin for working with an international regulator. Now on the other side of the world, you have the FBI, who most recently in November 15th of 2022 stated, and I quote, that, <laughs> that Christopher Wray, the director said China is a hazard to the United States way of life, blah, 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 all the rest of this stuff. Does Christopher Ray's verbiage get over to the Connecticut contingency? I don't know. It doesn't appear that way. So when Randy said they uh, recognize his colleagues at ANAB attest to the confidence and the integrity and competence of registrars accredited by IAF member accreditation bodies, you could throw this away. Now we're gonna go into this. You're looking behind me and seeing half a nut fuck you. In 2019, I exposed the factor of A2LA. Now A2LA is an accreditation body for laboratory accreditation. This will also tie in the factor that Wuhan, China more than likely released the COVID virus because a Miss Pamela Sale, who's the uh, VP of quality for laboratory certification I have in here, basically confesses that there is no protocols throughout laboratories and it's more than likely the COVID was released from that lab. So I exposed the factor that A2LA sat on ANSI's board. They also sat on the IAF. And at the time in between 2015 and 21, when a communist Chinese national, you'll see it very shortly, who's been involved with our quality since 1994, um, was ruling the roost between 2015 and 21. He is also, and you'll see a picture of that, he is also the chief executive of the China National Accreditation Services, which certified the suspect lab in Wuhan, China. <clears throat> and here she is, the woman of the hour. She's camera shy. She said, underneath my video, she said, A2LA does not sit on ANSI. They are both American accreditation bodies in equal standing. Well, I showed you. Yes, they do sit on ANSI. I mean, they, yes, they do sit on ANSI. But what happened is I put out another video showing her that document I showed you. I guess she didn't see it the first time. And a Mr. Russ Cheney, a Mr. Russ Cheney called me. And as you can see in 2019, let me just turn it over. 
as you can see in 2019, that Russ Cheney is the chairman of the American National Standards Institute. This is what he said, and I play this, all right? Yes, he did. And all the government agencies, the corporations, and those that sit on the board all approved it. I sent a letter. Actually, I did videos on all 40 members that uh, have personnel on there, like David Calhoun of Boeing, like um, like Jim Tassett of Lockheed. Uh, I sent, uh, you know, I did another video on Andrea Morakis from the DHS. Um, and it's absolutely disgusting. They don't reply. So I guess they're happy with half a nut fuck you. So what we did was we sent a letter to Joe Batia. Joe Batia is the VP or actually the chairman of the uh, American National Standards Institute. He handed it to his lawyer. Do you see what the lawyer says over there? He didn't hear it. I don't know. I can't hear it. Here, I'll hold it there. So what they did is all I wanted was an apology letter. I never got it. Unbelievable. I never got an apology from them, but eh, what are you going to do? Drek is Drek, as we say in the quality community. So what happened is I, um, I did a, um, uh, in 2022 in June, there was an opening for director at large at, at ANSI. I put in a 54 page document with 16 letters of recommendation from my customers. On top of that, the package came with a letter from Joe Bathia congratulating those candidates that were running for the director at large. Nice, right? So they also, in that package, there was a nine question, um, what Daryl Guberman can do, or anybody, what Daryl Guberman can do to facilitate ANSI's initiatives in the United States and throughout the country and throughout the world. Well, I filled that out. And the most disheartening thing I saw was at the bottom uh, of it, you know, I, I hope this isn't uh, I hope this isn't blurry, but I will read it to you as well. Uh, it stated that uh, the committee appreciates your interest in serving on the ANSI um, <clears throat> membership position, uh, director at large, and your willingness to provide us with additional information. Sincerely, Russ Cheney. So you think he was going to pick me? Eh, probably not. And they did. Sitting there also on uh, ANSI is the a Securities and Change Commission. Isn't that nice? The reason why Bell will lose uh, to Boeing, a very simple fact, is that Boeing and Lockheed Sikorsky, is you have them sitting on, <clears throat> you have them sitting on ANSI's board, uh, right over by the federal agencies, corporations, etc. And they've, uh, they were watched over by Communist China uh, in 2015 to 2021. Hold on one second. Let's give a little bit of light on the subject. ANSI, the American National Standards Institute is a private, not-for-profit, non-governmental agent, and not even an agency, a corporation that has federal agencies and corporations on board. <clears throat> In 2015, Randy Dory, Vice President of ANAB, Chairman of the IAF and also Principal on the IAF Tax Report International Accreditation Forum, handed over leadership to this communist Chinese national, Zhao Jin Wu, who's been involved with our quality since 1994. He is also the Chief Executive of the China National Accreditation Services and is mandated, and I say again, mandated by those people who welded the door shut during COVID on their own people, Communist China, that stated the China National Intelligence Law, Article Number 7, which mandates espionage and cybersecurity issues. You have ANSI and ANAP. Uh, ANSI took over complete control over ANAP in 2018. You have federal agencies, corporations. We go back here. 
And we look at the factor that Randy at the time in 2017, Randy was being advertised as a private concern and as the vice president of ANAB on the Department of Homeland Security. Yes, he was on the Department of Homeland Security. We're going to show you this mess as it comes up. And uh, sitting on ANSI's board, uh, getting paid $262,000 as a royalty payment, which a royalty payment means that there's no taxes or it's unregisterable on, on uh, yeah, unregisterable on, <laughs> is there a word like that? Well, it's not registered per se on the IRS. The IRS doesn't know what to do with a royalty payment. That's what I've gathered. So <clears throat> you have Phil Matheson, uh, a, a, a Department of Homeland Security director of standards, all the rest of this happy horse crap that they give you of uh, these words so that ANSI has, ANSI ANAP could get into all these government agencies. We'll show you some contracts as well. If not here, it, it will be in the d description. So he's sitting on Department of Homeland Security of Zhao Jin Wu, who in 2017, we have a picture of him standing in the laboratory at Wuhan, China, the, the bio level four lab, okay? He's standing there giving them an ISO 17025 certification while he's still the IAF, International Accreditation, of, uh, International Accreditation Forum Chairman. And by the way, uh, ANSI and ANAP, because they are underwriters for the IAF and ILAC, if there was a failure in that lab, which it presumes so after you hear about Pamela Sale giving that deposition in Texas, then as the chairman of the IAF, a ANSI ANAP takes full legal responsibility. In fact, you have a little tiny note here that was listed on the uh, IAF that Randy wrote uh, that com complimented uh, Zhao Jinwu for becoming the chairman of the IAF and spending so much time in the United States quality arena since 1994. Randy also discussed this about an IAF MLA. An IAF MLA, Multilateral Arrangement Agreement uh, Organization, or MRA, Multi-Regional uh, Agreement, is equivalent in accreditation to ANAP. So here goes another legal responsibility. If there are failures out there with companies whose uh, accreditations are different, but they sit on the as an IAF MLA, then ANSI ANAP takes full legal responsibility. I haven't heard anything different. Nobody's called. Hey, Joe Bathia. <laughs> or Randy. I think Randy's out of commission. But you see this. Uh, uh, sitting on the IAF is Iran and Pakistan. You'll see this very shortly. Um, <clears throat> and here's ANSI ANAP. ANSI ANAP, between 2015 and 2021, and for those of you who were ANAP accredited, during those times, there could have been some cybersecurity issues because remember, Zhao Jinwu, who's the head of the IAF, is mandated to take your data through the China National Intelligence Law, Article Number 7. Who's sitting by? Uh, ANSI ANAP, but Pakistan and Iran on top of it. You know who else sits there? Lockheed Martin sat on the IAF back then. Yes, Lockheed Martin sat by Iran and sat by ANSI ANAP. And by the way, they admitted to harboring some of the terrorists of 9-11, both countries, and Pakistan harbored Osama bin Laden, the mastermind of 9-11. I don't say this about the people, but the politicians. You have 10 different organizations, 10 different organizations, uh, uh, you know, 10 different registrars that can issue an ANAP accredited certification. <clears throat> the government contractor who contacted me said, Daryl, um, uh, we see that you're not on the OASIS database. I said, no, would you be on it? In 2016, I told them we were invited to join, but they were too immersed, as you saw, with communist China. I, as a proud American, would not do that. I will not succumb to that, uh, that issue with ANSI ANM and how enveloped they are, not only in China, but they on the IAF sitting right over by. I just showed it to you. I'll show it to you again so you get the full feeling of this. Sitting by two American companies, ANSI and ANAP. You have Pakistan and Iran who were equivalent in accreditation to ANAP. Do you think I'm crazy? Oh my goodness. So he asked us about the IEQG. I said, I can't join the No way. They sit on ANSI. At the time, between 2015, 2021, they too were controlled by communist China. On top of it, things get better. There was a procedure in 2003 put out by ANAP. And uh, the procedure was a heads up 22. And this is what it says about the OASIS database. You tell me, ladies and gentlemen, business owners, if this is about quality. 
An AS9100 certified organization does not have an option to be excluded from the OASIS database. Hmm. And 4.3 is the kicker. If an AS9100 certified organization refuses to be entered in the OASIS database, for example, refuses to pay database fees, their AS9100 certificate shall be revoked by the registrar or the accreditation body. Wow, that's something else. Now we go to the Department of Homeland Security. They too sit on ANSI, and they sat there between 2015 and 2021. Uh, you have Phil Matheson, who's getting $262,000, not for profit, uh, actually through a, a royalty payment. Isn't that nice? And now here we go. This is a good one. This is the Department of Homeland Security. This was taken on 9-8-2017 at 11.01 uh, with 56 seconds at 11.01 p.m. You click on it and you flip it over to the second page and you see Randy Dotery being advertised. And I have all the dates. I took a snapshot of it because I knew they were going to take it down because having a private concern up on a government entity is a no-no. But they figured since Phil Masterson is getting financed by ANSI that Randy could be advertised on the DHS. <laughs> Isn't that cozy? So we continue. In April of 2018, um, this is the way it looked. Oh, it looks the same, right? But you click it for page two and Randy disappeared. So let me show it to you so you get the full regalia here. You have this 2017 in September. This is in April of 2018. They both look the same. You click it, second page, and as you can see, Randy Dory on this side, it's a totally different animal, is it not? He got taken down because I exposed it. Then you have NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology which runs the National Institute of Standards and Technology Manufacturing Extension Partnership, which is supposed to be geared for manufacturing and business. Well, let me tell, tell you this simple fact. They get both state and federal funding where 64.85% of that goes to pay their management and personnel. And the rest gets distributed to the poor manufacturing people. That if they were to distribute the money, let's say in Connecticut, I will give you a 2015, they took in $4.2 million, 2.75 went to pay their management and personnel, 1.5 was left to distribute amongst 5,000 manufacturers, which means that's $300 each if it was distributed equally. NIST is a terrible organization and should be disbanded. Okay, it is absolutely horrendous, but you know why it won't be? Because we have Gordon Gilliman sitting on ANSI, getting compensated of $120,000 non taxable dollars. You have Randy Dory, and this is where it gets better even more so, because Randy explains, and here it is, an IAF MLA works to facilitate global trade and vision of certified ones accepted everywhere. An IAF MLA signatory are obligated to recognize other certified and accredited by IAF MLA signatories as equivalent. So a company with an ISO 9001, or I'm going to add this, or an ISO 17025 for laboratory certification, certification that is accredited by the China National Accreditation Services, the IF MLA signatory in China is equivalent to the ISO 9001 or ISO 17025 certificate accredited by ANAB. And as I told you, uh, ANSI ANAB are underwriters for the IF. So when Zhao Jinwu was standing in the lab, in Wuhan, China, issuing that certification of ISO 17025, the liability falls on ANSI ANAP. So those people who are saying that the laboratory escaped, there was an escape, you're going to hear from Pamela Sale, and this will prove it. He was at the time in 2017 the chairman of the International Accreditation Forum Incorporated in Delaware. He was also the chief executive of the China National Accreditation Services. You have now Pamela Sale, the vice president of quality for laboratory certification for ASCLD Lab and um, ANSI ANAB own ASCLD Lab and also ANAB is a standalone accreditation body for laboratory. She stayed under deposition because there was a failure in the laboratory, so they took her in and they asked her. And she said, and I'm going to change it just slightly. I'm going to add uh, a phlebotomy lab and a bio level four lab. That's the only thing I'm going to add to this. One of the issues is that there is no commonly agreed upon set of standards that forensic labs, 
um, phlebotomy labs and bio-level 4 labs around the country and the world have to follow. Instead, there are informal guidelines that labs can choose to follow or not. Yes, so basically, she said the system is out of control, but they still issue a certificate. We have Mr. <clears throat> we have Mr. Uh, Fauci here. There was a uh, <clears throat> there was a procedure, a training procedure, for bio level four labs in China, and the only bio level four lab in this procedure that was written in May two thousand nineteen. It was number five, volume twenty five. For those guys who want to research, or like news reporters. And it said Wuhan Biosafety Laboratory Level 4 of the Chinese Academy of Sciences was the only one that was listed. The CDC also sits on ANSI's board. We'll bring uh, Daryl Anthony out here. He was inquisitioned by Senator Rand Paul about gain-of-function research, and uh, he said there's no such thing. He says, I don't know about gain-of-function. No, I, I, I don't know. Well, this is an article... That came out of a Chinese technical document. I have it. And uh, it is the second, it is the upcoming second um, China-U.S. workshop on challenges of emerging infections, laboratory safety, and global health security. And the first item of business is gain-of-function research. If you want a copy of it, please do not hesitate to contact me through Daryl, D-A-R-Y-L-T-Q-R-S at yahoo.com or call me 203-556-1493. Here's the full document. And here is the picture of Zhao Jinwu uh, in China, in Wuhan. An uh, article listed there is talking about that. Um, you also have the factor at the end of the article, or at the end of the document, is of course the one that I had blown up about the second annual workshop. Now here we go. <clears throat> we have Pfizer, who sits on ANSI's board, along with Johnson & Johnson. All right, Pfizer and Johnson Johnson. We've discovered that ANSI ANAP are underwriters for the IF International Accreditation Form and International Laboratory Accreditation Cooperation. <clears throat> An underwriter, you can read that, stop the video if you'd like. But this is the one that I'm going to hit upon because during the time of this standard uh, um, solicitation offer and award, okay, so as they said, um, this was 2018 and basically the government um, said that uh, ANSI, ANAP, or, and IAF had to be on that certificate. So the government called in Communist China. Remember, Zhao Jinwu was still the chairman of the IAF in 2018. So this uh, SOA, let me just turn it like this so there's no glare. It states over here, it states, ANAP is an underwriter for the International Accreditation Forum. That means that they are responsible for any failures within the quality arena. They usually say, we certify the system, not the product. Well, I'm sorry to say by them being underwriters, everything is off the table. You have the FDA sitting on ANSI's board, the FDA. They also sit on ANAB's board. They gave ANAB um, third-party privileges, and here it is. You can't lie about this. I have everything documented. And here is the actual article, so that you can see this. You have the USDA. You have NIH. You also have, <clears throat> you also have the FAA, as I told you, all of them. There's more than this. You have the FBI, where poor Christopher Ray says, we must maintain vigilance over China, Yet between 2015, when he was sitting there by director, as a director, his organization, by the way, the FBI got hacked many times. I've got all the data. You want it? I think I have more data than they do. <laughs> Unbelievable. You have the Pentagon. The Pentagon, who sits right over by Lockheed Martin, Lockheed Sikorsky, and also Boeing. And Bell thinks that they've got the contract in the bag. They don't because they also deal with the government accounting office where Lockheed started to cry like a baby. The contract was for the <clears throat> for the new replacement Black Hawk. You have the Defiant SB-1 that was made by uh, uh, <coughs> Lockheed, uh, Sikorsky, and Boeing. And you have the Valor 280 uh, from Bell Helicopter. The only thing is, since 2013, Lockheed and Bell were forming an alliance 
to manufacture the Valor 280. And then I guess through the woods, they said, oh, don't do it, we're gonna buy Sikorsky. So they backed out of that contract. Nevertheless, Lockheed Martin, because of their cybersecurity issues in the past 2019, the Chinese, and the Chinese already had a show, a, uh, a military show for, uh, for purchasing military items. They have a model of the uh, SB-1 uh, Defiant made by uh, Lockheed, Sikorsky, and Boeing, and also the V-280 Valor. <laughs> Isn't that a tender moment in a cybersecurity world? And then you have the Department of Justice. And the final thing is this. I'm not disparaging anybody, but they can twist everything around. So I'm going to say this directly to those managers, Joe Bathia, the chairman, and Russ Cheney, and his slacky lawyer, uh, Jameson Carroll, who got his degree out of a box of Cracker Jacks. It's disgusting. I'm saying it to Jim Tassett, Lockheed Martin. Get off your golf cart and look at your employees. I'm saying this to David Calhoun, who only knows about aerospace when he, touches, when he touched the engine at GE. It's disgusting. The quality issues out there are pervasive. We see it time and time again. And I will say this. A lawyer wrote me a note during my whole lawsuit with, um, <laughs> it's funny, with one of uh, Anzi Anab's lackeys. Because Randy Dory, who I showed you, who invited us into... Um, who invited us into uh, ANAP or IF or both in 2016, he said, I know him best. When he complains, we at ANAP take him seriously. He is the guardian of accredited certification, and I have deep respect for him. There was some sort of alliance there. They wanted to take me out of action. Well, I'm going to say this. I won that. I'm not going to mention his name and pull this baloney because he'll try to sue me again, and I don't want to waste my three years and money on him. He wanted to bankrupt me like he did to himself in 2016. So I'm going to say this. This lawyer wrote me, and he said this. Dear Daryl, I would think very carefully before I say or do anything in the legal arena, not only because I represent other people and can make them look bad, but because I'm a professional who understands how the world really works. Nearly everything you see in litigating in any court, federal or state, is an illusion. In the political world, we call it blue smoke and mirrors. The Merriam Dictionary, Webster Dictionary, states this, smoke and mirrors as something intended to disguise or draw attention away from uh, or after an embarrassing or unpleasant issue. And that is exactly what Jameson Carroll did when we all heard about half a nut, fuck you. That is the mission statement for Boeing, for Lockheed. The only one I don't think that has that mission statement is Bell Helicopter. That's it. But the rest of them do because they approve and condone that. And that's not me saying it. That's Russ Cheney, the Cheney, the chairman of the organization, the chairman for the nomination committee. Isn't that a tender moment? And just remember this. When speaking the truth, it is many times like administering medication to the dead. I leave it here, business owners, uh, my fellow uh, customers. Uh, my prospective customers, those prospective customers within the government contracting arena, I wanted to explain it to you. I'm sorry it's 33 minutes long. I apologize profusely, but this stuff is disgusting. 203-556-1493 or Daryl, TQRS at yahoo.com. I thank you.